know if you've seen these uh, recent twin studies. They're not so recent, but you know the guy Bouchard in Minnesota who does the studies of identical twins that are separated at birth and then they're reared in different parts of Earth. And just a few years ago, um, he reported that political orientation has a rather high heritability coefficient, like in the order of 0.5. And all that means is that about half of the variance in any population of, uh, of political attitudes has a genetic basis. You know, and so basically, you know, the rock and the hard place kind of maps on to what in American culture we would see as conservative and liberal, respectively. But if a foundation for one's political orientation is genetic in basis, then that suggests two things, I think. One is that there must be some value to dogmatic adherence to ideological principles, at least in the days of yesteryear, or it wouldn't persist in the gene pool. You know, which is just kind of a psychobabble way of saying that even if it's not a political predilection that I share, there may, it, it may be the case that as a society we need all kinds. That, and in fact, Bill Clinton, when he gave a talk, I think it was at the Bush Library inauguration, you know, when he said, am I, on, am I the only person in the audience who likes Al Gore and George W. Bush? To which I said, yes, you are the only person. <laughs> but, but anyway, what Clinton said was, you know, we may really, instead of like thinking about, you know, we need to all be liberal or all conservative, why don't we think about what each side brings to the proverbial table? And, and to note that there are times when it might be more prudent to stick to traditional institutions, not because they're perfect, but because if we recklessly dispose of them without any clear idea of what we'll do in their stead, that might be really suicidal. On the other hand, uh, to just cling to tradition for its own sake, well, we'd be sitting on the dirt, not in chairs today, on, you know, in caves, just kind of throwing our children against the cave walls whenever they cried and annoyed us. We're like, oh, you're on your own now, we'll just have other kids. So I guess my point is, I, actually I forgot what my point was, but it, it's, it's that it's the rock and the hard place may not be as simple as one way or the other, so much as how do we get the best out of both, if that makes any sense. I, I know that it will require a radically different form of public discourse than the one that we now engage in. I think mm -hmm. it's safe to say that we have never been more polarized. It is very unlikely that the average American ever sits in the same room with people that they disagree with. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I, I keep yammering about the need for civil disagreement that, um, you know, democracy was never supposed to be the result of unanimous agreement. In fact, it was supposed to be the result of spirited disagreement by people of goodwill who, uh, you know, in the spirit of constructive engagement, generally come to a compromise, not in the most positive sense of the word, uh, outcome that serves everyone's interest. I'm not sure that all problems can be resolved, um, but we're kind of, we, we just really, we've, we go very back and forth on this one. And uh, I'm not sure, well, I am sure that we have nothing definitive, except as you started with, which is that the, the, the path lies somewhere in the middle. Um, you know, rigid and dogmatic insistence on a particular conception of reality, um, that has a long history of not ending well. Similarly, this idea that you can believe anything that you want and that anything goes, uh, history has shown that uh, to be both narcissistic as well as counterproductive. So I, I think that just raises the question that you started with, and that's uh, 
how do you come up with a set of beliefs that people can share because after all we're symbolic creatures we have no choice but to collectively generate a conception of reality that we can provisionally accept in the absence of something better and how can that give us the psychological fortitude to get up every day without having to annihilate someone who happens to take issue with those beliefs. I, yeah, I, I would say that's like a top to-do question that uh -huh. someone should work on. Yeah. <laughs>